Hello everyone, I am Narc Survivor. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before I begin, please hit the thumbs up button down below to show your support. It helps the YouTube algorithm to get this message out there. Hit subscribe, click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, you can go to my website. It is narcsurvivor.co.uk. How a narcissist saps your energy. Narcissists will sap your energy. They will exhaust and deplete you until you're reduced to a shell. They will diminish your strength and character. They will destroy your confidence and they will leave you feeling tired all the time until you begin to feel depressed because they've just sapped all of your energy and self-esteem from you. Before I discovered what a narcissist was, I was researching about energy vampires as I was already familiar with this term. And this is exactly what narcissists are. Narcissists are energy vampires. They're people who sap your emotional energy and feed off your life force, which may result in them getting increased energy when they're around you. Because they tend to prey on a highly sensitive, empathic, and happy people. And they feed off your kindness and compassion until they leave you feeling drained of your energy. Some of them may have low self-awareness and when they are made more aware of their energy zapping tendencies, they may then alter how their actions affect you so that they can fly under the radar. But it's still an energy vampire and the longer you spend around them, the more drained you will feel. Which is why if you ever confront them on it and they're aware of the negative effect they're having on you, they will typically give you the silent treatment or stop talking to you. Because they don't want to feel inadequate. But if they're a malignant narcissist, they may see their energy zapping tendencies as a source of power so then it may just draw them to you even more. But even then, they will make you feel like you're the one who is dependent on them when it's actually the other way around because they need something from you and they can't get it from anyone else. They are dependent on you for this one thing and they can't live without it, which is why they need and want this from you. And it's not your attention or validation, although that is also what they want. What they want is your energy, because it makes them feel good. So whenever they're around you, they're completely hyper-focused and absorbed in getting this from you, to the point where they appear to completely ignore or tune out everything else. Because extracting your energy is an activity they're considered to be fun and interesting. And when they're getting something from you that they can't generate from with themselves, they can have their highly focused attention on you for a very long time. They may become obsessed with it. And they may also become very needy to where they're wanting too much attention because they're insatiable so no matter how much you give to them, they will always want more and it will never be enough. But you may not have been aware of this until now. Narcissists cannot survive without narcissistic supply. They need people's energy, attention and validation, but they need yours more than anyone else's, which is why they have targeted you for a very specific reason, because there is something very special about you. And I remember an ex-narcissist even told me this when we first met. She commented on how I walked, talked and carried myself. And 
pointed it out as being the reason why I was the victim of a smear campaign, as though it was blatantly obvious and apparent, and I was just too ignorant or naive to see it. But this is exactly how it is. It's your energy. It's the way that you are. This is what has, uh, what has attracted the narcissist to your life. They want you. They want your energy. They love how you're so patient. Where you're always able to accept and tolerate delays, problems and suffering without being annoyed or anxious. And how you're so compassionate where you're able to show sympathy and concern for them. You just always have the time to listen to them. Even though you may have other priorities in your life. And there may be a lot of other things that you may be dealing with. But you're just always able to give some of your energy to them. Because you have an abundance of it. And whenever you're giving out your energy. You're seeing people as your equal. You don't judge them. And in that moment, they feel like they're the only person who matters to you, even though you may have many other responsibilities. And you're a high value person who may be disciplined, hardworking, successful, motivated, or even physically attractive. And it's actually very rare for people to come across someone who not only has all of these qualities, but they're also willing to entertain new prospects and endeavors. Most people in these types of positions are not going to give people the time of day. They're just going to keep it moving. Because even people who don't have much going on in their lives don't tend to think about or consider the feelings or needs of other people. They're too preoccupied with themselves. So for you to be not only a high value person, but someone who is also empathetic is actually very rare. So of course, they're going to become obsessed with you and they're going to be addicted to your energy because it's a very potent source of supply for them. They're not going to find someone else in your position who they can manipulate and control because most people at that level are not going to put another person's feelings or needs before their own. So that's why they focus their attention on you. Because they want your life force. They want your energy and attention. They want everything that makes you, you. Which is why they treat you as their primary source of supply. They want to keep you around. Because they're dependent on you for your energy and there's nothing they can do about it because it's an unmet emotional need from childhood which is why they're seeking it in adulthood it's why they need it and why they're obsessed with it they've got to have your energy attention and validation because it pacifies them and relieves their emotional pain when normally they would have this inner critic this inner dialogue, but when they're around you, it disappears and they're no longer self-conscious. They're no longer feeling bad about themselves because you're non-judgmental. You treat people as your equal. You accept them for who they are without thinking bad about them or about what they're doing. So it makes them feel good about themselves and it's why they're addicted to you. But eventually, you get tired of them and you become indifferent. You have no particular interest or sympathy. You become unconcerned. And when this happens, they don't like it because you're not conforming to the standard that they're expecting of you. You're not giving them the medicine that they're looking for. And if you're not providing this to them, they're unable to manage and survive so they will remove themselves from you and then they will punish you because they know that you've got it to give it's why they targeted you so if you don't give them everything they first saw in you they will see it as rejection 
because they feel entitled to it. And if they're not considering that they've already drained you of your energy because they're preoccupied with their own interests and needs. So they see it as rejection. And then they feel compelled to punish you. It's like beating a horse down when it's down. Beating a horse when it's down. But they don't get to see that side to it. Because they're predominantly focused on what they need from you. So all they can do is continue to punish you. And this is why they typically have other sources of supply at their fingertips. For when they feel like you have gone against them. Because then they feel the need for a reset to start again with someone new. Until they finally come back to you. And it's why they come back. Because they realize they can't get that anywhere else. You're the only one who has that substance, that soul. Which is why they always come back to you. And it's why their behavior occurs in cycles. Where in one moment they're love bombing you. Then they're devaluing you and discarding you. Until they finally hoover you. Because it's all about what you can provide. Which is why they're so hyper focused on what you're doing. Your feelings, actions and behaviours. And what you are providing. And it always runs through the same cycle. Because they can't survive without you. They have this negative internal dialogue. So they are listening constantly. They're scanning you to see if you are judging them. To see if you are going against them. And then they're telling themselves that if you loved them, then you wouldn't have done that. You would have obeyed them. When all of this negative self-talk is all based on things that they experienced in their childhood. They were taught that love is conditional and that you've got to keep supplying and giving. Only now, they want to be on the other end of it. So they expect you to be doing that for them. Which is why when you're not doing that, they're punishing you. And it's why you can't survive in relationships like this. Because you can't just keep supplying and giving. You're never going to be able to sustain it. Which is why they will typically use you as a pawn in their game. So that they can bring other people into it. Because they assume that you're going to fail them at some point. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.